there! My name is Olha, and in this Lens Studio tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the configuration template. The configuration template utilizes the user interface helper to create a lens that can be modified by a snapchatter on their phone. By allowing the snapchatter to modify the parameters of their lens, they can personalize the effects to their liking in real time. The template demonstrates an example try-on lens, where users can modify a virtual head, but you can also use it to allow the snapshotters to control many different things, like the strength of a color filter, the augmentation they want, and more. To get started, first open Lens Studio and select the configuration template. The configuration template comes with several helpers and examples that can help you build your configurable lens. We'll first explore these helpers, then go through the virtual try-on example. To try any helpers or example, toggle the checkbox next to them in the Objects panel. As you play around with this template, think about how you can make your lens configurable. You can bring in any of these UIs in your own lens by right-clicking on the UI panel and choosing Export. Then open your own project, right-click the orthographic camera and click Import. The first example are the widgets that you can use to add control to the lens. You have buttons to trigger actions, toggle to enable or disable things, a color picker as well as slider. To modify any of the UIs, simply select them in the Objects panel. Then, in a Scene panel, you can move them around as you would with any other screen object. Finally, in the Inspector panel, you can see the different options available for each object, such as how it's visualized and what it triggers. You can take a deeper look at the options by going to lensstudio.com and searching for user interface. But in short, each UI has a callback that you can use to trigger behaviors or your custom script. Next, we have the layout example which allows you to automatically lay out children objects on the screen, such as buttons, for example. Notice how in this example there are a lot of button objects and each of the buttons are actually not laid out in the scene panel. Instead, it's placed on the scene by the UI panel with layout. This helper is great because if you have many objects, so you don't have to lay them out one by one. Additionally, if you're adding more objects later, you don't have to modify everything. Let's try that now and add another button. To add to the layout, add another object as a child of the UI panel with layout. For example, we can duplicate a button by right-clicking on one and choosing Duplicate. Cool! Lastly, you can modify the layout by modifying the options in the UI panel with layout. To do this, select the object in the Objects panel, then in the Inspector panel under the Layout Grid script, modify the layout settings you want. Now that we've learned some ways of building a UI, let's take a look at how we can put it together to create a menu to control our lens. The demo experience has two main parts, the content that is being modified and the UIs that modify them. You can find the content to be modified by opening the objects marked Edit Contents. For example, we can open the camera object and find the head that is applied on top of the user. Like other contents attached to the screen, you can find the UIs under the orthographic camera. First, let's play with the lens to see our configuration in action. I can click on each of these buttons and they will open a sub-menu with different types of controls. For example, sliding the color picker changes the color of the head. Each sub-menu has a back button to go back to the main menu. Awesome! Let's take a look at how this menu is set up. In the Objects panel, you'll notice two parts that define the menu. First, you have the UI itself, similar to what we saw in the previous example. For some of these, 
their function is defined in the UI. For example, a color picker modifies the color property of the material. However, in some cases their action is defined via a behavior. For example, notice how this UI button calls several behavior triggers. These keywords correspond to a behavior found in a behavior object that tells the lens what happens when that button is pressed. Let's open the behavior object and find an example of corresponding triggers. Notice how these behaviors have a trigger off on custom trigger and their trigger name matches one of the listed in the UI elements we saw earlier. Next, we can see that response time defines what the buttons do. You can learn more about how these behaviors work by searching for behavior on the Lens Studio website. But in short, they allow you to call many of the common functions in Lens Studio without writing a script by describing when they're called, the trigger, and what they should call their response. To summarize, our configurable experience has the content to be modified, UI that user can interact with and describe what it does, as well as an optional corresponding behaviors that allow you to describe additional logic. Now that you can see different types of UIs you can add, how you can lay them out, as well as create your own configurable lens, give it a shot. Thanks for watching and have fun creating your configurable lenses.